Hello history fans and welcome back to the podcast that helps you learn a little bit of history. Now one of the series that I've been doing on TikTok pretty much since I started like three years ago is random history. I'll say sometimes just one fact but most of the time it's three short random facts from history that I won't really explain um, anything. I don't really explain anything in the video <laughs> basically. Um, it's ideal for the short attention span that TikTok has given everyone. But I had a comment the other day that said someone wanted a long random history episode and I was like wow brilliant idea I'm gonna do that. So I've gone through all 180 something videos in that playlist and I'm pretty sure there's loads from when I started that aren't even in there. I've written them down and in this episode we're just going to spurt some random history facts at you and the ultimate random history episode and to be honest there will be some repeated because I can't ever remember if I've told you something already um, and yes like for part two, subscribe for part two, let me know in the comments <laughs> if you want it um, Yeah, and let me know if you had a favourite fact let's get into some history. I also haven't put these in any particular order, um, the ASMR version will be sort of in time order but this one won't be so enjoy the real random history. <laughs> um, so Napoleon used to wander the streets of Paris dressed as the lower class of the bourgeoisie hoping to find out what the people thought about their emperor. He used to write soppy love letters and in 1795 wrote a romantic novella about a heroic revolutionary French soldier who engineered his own death at the front of a charge towards the enemy after his wife was unfaithful. And it's supposed to parallel his own relationship with the Queen of Sweden and Norway. His soldiers also discovered the Rosetta Stone during the 1799 Egyptian campaign. Napoleon used to sing when agitated, and he wasn't that small, for the time, anyway. <laughs> the quickest excavations of Pompeii happened in 1806, when Napoleon's sister, Queen Caroline, was married to the King of Naples and had everything sped up a bit. We have three, maybe four kings who died on the toilet. In 1016, King Edmund got stabbed to death while he was on the toilet. In 1216, King John nearly died on or near a toilet of dysentery. And in 1760, George II died on the loo, as I'm sure you all know from the song. And in 1135, we have the one that's just hit my chin with my microphone. The one that's most debated is Henry I, who died after gorging on a river eel, a lamprey. Queen Elizabeth II was born in the same year as Marilyn Monroe, Leonardo da Vinci was only a year younger than Christopher Columbus, Abraham Lincoln was 12 years old when Napoleon died, Neil Armstrong was a teenager when Orville Wright, the inventor of the aeroplane, died, and Betty White was 9 years old when Thomas Edison died. Pablo Picasso was born after and died after Jimi Hendrix. London has probably got the underground tube to the last public hanging in the UK in 1868 because the first tube station was Aldersgate um, in 1865. McDonald's was founded on the 15th of May 1940 and five days later prisoners were taken to concentration camps like Auschwitz. When the London Underground opened the American Civil War was still going on. The first Star Wars film came out in 1977, which is also when the last execution happened in France. The woolly mammoths were still alive when the Egyptians were first building the pyramids. That one really blew my mind. <laughs> Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of the iPhone than she did to the building of the pyramids. I feel like that's quite a common fact though. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. The countries obviously existed before and were populated, but the empire didn't start until 1400 and Oxford started in 1060 or 90? George Washington didn't know that dinosaurs existed because the first fossils weren't discovered until 1824 and he died in 1799. Nintendo was founded in 1889, which is also when Jack the Ripper was still about. The founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus, were raised by wolves. Rome had seven kings before it became a republic, the last being Tarquin in 509 BCE. The Victorians used zinc oxide makeup to appear paler and painted on veins to appear see-through. Ancient Spartan brides shaved their heads and wore men's clothes on their wedding day. The Vikings settled disputes in court and eventually lived cohesively with the Saxons. Claude Duval was a French highwayman in England. 
who once played music and danced with a lady he was robbing, after which he stole less money from her than he usually would. Eventually he was caught, but Charles II actually quite liked him and tried to have him freed, but he was still hung. Lewis Carroll's real name was Charles Dodson. Arthur John Priest survived an odd amount of shipwrecks. He was stoking the Titanic, but survived that sinking, only getting frostbite. Then he served on the Alcantara, which was a World War I ship, but it sank in battle in 1916, and he survived yet again, and went on to serve on the Britannic and the Donegal, both wartime hospital ships that sank, but he survived. The ancient Greeks liked to find out what was going to happen to them, so they went to hear prophecies from the Oracle of Delphi, but that could get rather expensive, and is now said to have been on the site of some sort of hallucinogenic. Until Georgian times, boxing was just standing there being punched by your opponent, because it wasn't until 1805 that Bill Richmond did the first dodge, called the Bob and Weave. A pirate doctor's cure for scurvy was bloodletting, and they even used hemlock as medicine, and if you had a bad cut on your arm or leg, it would just be chopped off and sealed with hot tar to save it from rotting or getting infected. During World War II, cardboard cutouts of planes and tanks were used to trick the German planes flying over that they, that the enemy was there, and <laughs> that's where the army was. In 1713, Captain Basil Hood and his crew stole a herd of cattle from land, but when they got it on ship, they got really ill and vomited everywhere. So then when the Navy caught the pirates, they just let them go free because the ship stank so much. To keep evil spirits out of their homes, the ancient Greeks would paint tar across their door so the spirits would get stuck and would not be able to enter their home to spread illness. In the 19th century, Alexandra, Princess of Wales, was a fashion, a fashion, <laughs> a fashion icon, a fashion icon, but she suffered a rheumatism which left her disabled, so she had to use a walking stick to help her walk. But the elite women in society admired her and copied everything she did, and a limp became a fashion trend. A Chopin shoe was a very tall wooden soled shoe that did affect people's ability to walk and balance, but they were designed to protect the wearer from unevenly paved streets, which I don't really understand, but it did save people from wet, muddy streets, and it enhanced your stature. Ancient Egyptians wore wax cones on their head, full of perfume, to hide their odour, and they were mostly worn by women on top of their wigs, where they would just melt throughout the day. The Duke of Beaufort played tennis inside his own house, Badminton House, and then started playing the Indian game Poonar, which is tennis but with a shuttlecock. It's safer for inside play, and then he claimed it as his own creation. The Vikings navigated the sea using ravens. They would let them out of the cage and follow it to dry land. And at night they used the stars, and it must have been a good system because it did work. When in 793 they sailed across the Great North Sea, um, and they invaded us... Hopefully you know that's from horrible histories. What was that noise? That was weird. Emperor Alagabalus used the guts of sacrifice people to tell the future, and he kept lions in his palace. Before the Bronze Age began, humans were just used to using stone tools for like two million years, um, but for Lee World they would have used moss. Georgian people used to brick up their windows so they didn't have to pay the window tax. Some pirates, like those on a black barge ship, had to follow very strict rules, like they weren't allowed to go out after eight, they weren't allowed to gamble on board or fight, and they would even vote on things and split their treasure. But if you did break a rule, you were marooned. Ned Low, the pirate, cut off the ears of the captain of a captured whaling ship and made him eat them. When rich Romans died, they would have their favourite slave fight to the death over their grave, which was a bit of a trend for a while. Gladiators did go to proper gladiator schools where they trained, and only the very best were allowed to fight in the Colosseum. Aretiarius was the gladiator who would fight with a trident and a fishnet. Sometimes in the trenches of World War I, if a soldier was caught in a gas attack, they would wee on their handkerchief and put it over their noses and their mouth because the chemicals from the urine would keep the gas out. There's a milkman in London in 1917, maybe called Mick Wall. 
we don't know for certain, who used to water down milk to make it go further. Firstly, it was illegal to do this, but also he got the water from the public toilets. Ancient Egyptians worshipped over 2,000 gods, for some that you might know, are Ra, king of the gods and father of creation. Thoth is the master of magic and knowledge, and Osiris was the king of the dead. Flutes during the Ice Age were made from bird bones. A preserved poo is called a coprolite, and the largest one ever found comes from the Viking in the 9th century. Coprolite means fossilised human poo, but paleofeces means human droppings found on an archaeological expedition. Apparently they're not the same thing. The oldest complaint ever written comes from 1750 BCE from a Mesopotamian man, Nani, who writes to complain about some copper he was sold. The Victorians would take pictures of their dead loved ones, most commonly children, who they would dress in white and pose in chairs. Days of the week were named after Viking gods. Odin or Woden is Wednesday. Tuesday and Friday are named after Tyr and Frigg, the god and goddess of war and marriage. And Thor, thunder, is Thursday. Woden's day, Wednesday. Vikings didn't wear horned helmets. Words like snort, lump, scrawny and anger all come from the Old Norse language. Vikings had good hygiene and were relatively well-groomed. I think I must have done a Viking-specific episode here because Viking is actually a 19th century phrase. At their time, they would have been referred to as Norse, Norsemen or Danes. Sickly Viking children were abandoned in the wilderness or thrown out to sea. Viking women could request a divorce or inherit property. When an important Viking died, they were put on a boat with all their belongings pushed out to sea and put on fire. Vikings liked being blonde so much so that they would use a certain soap to try and bleach their hair. The Viking explorer Leif Erikson beat Christopher Columbus to discovering America by 500 years. The first Viking settlement in Greenland was founded by Leif Erikson's father, Erik the Red, who was banished to Greenland from Iceland. Iceland, <laughs> after murdering several men. Draco, the ancient Greek lawmaker, made a lot of things punishable by death, like stealing an apple, but he died of suffocation because there was a big event in Athens for people to go and show their gratitude towards him and listen to him talk, and when he came out on stage, people threw so much stuff at him that he suffocated under the pile. Bloody Mary's nickname is kind of unfair because out of all the Tudor monarchs, she's not actually the most murderous. Elizabeth had 600 people executed, and Henry had over 70,000 people murdered. In 1187, when the Knights Templar were doing a raid on a Saracen camp, one of them tripped and fell headfirst into a big hole that was their toilet, and he drowned. Buddy fell so noisily, he woke up the Saracens, who surrounded all the knights and killed them. Henry VIII owned 154 recorders, 19 violas, he played the lute and harpsichord, and was a tenor singer who could sight read, and he liked to perform duets. In Roman Britain, carpenters' workshops would have been in the front of their houses that opened up into the streets. In the Tudor times, if you were wealthy and wanted to show it, you would have black teeth because sugar was so expensive that only the rich could eat it, and they'd eat so much that their teeth rotted. At the time of Queen Victoria's wedding, it was common for dresses to be in any colour you wanted, but she wanted to show off the lace embroidery on her dress, so she had it made in white and then said that her guests couldn't wear white. And then, apparently, she had the design patterns destroyed so no one could copy it. While some Vikings lived on ships and only got off to burn villages to the ground, the vast majority were just farmers who lived on land with their family, yielding just enough crop to feed them. The Victorian era was a thriving time for the arts, not just industrialisation. There's authors like Emily Bronte, Charles Dickens and Oscar Wilde writing books like Alice in Wonderland, Treasure Island and The Jungle Book. In 1871, we have the Bank Holidays Act that gives us extra days off during the year and we have the very first travel agent, Thomas Cook, starting to sell holidays to the seaside. Vikings didn't wear horned helmets, but did have excellent hygiene. They bathed at least once a week, which was amazing for the time. And excavation sites found combs, tweezers and ear cleaners, among many other things. My light just died. <laughs> Sorry for that interlude, folks. Um, those of you watching rather than just listening to this episode, um, you'll know that my light just died and 
I turned it back on and I've moved it so hopefully the lighting is actually better because I think I was being lit from underneath so I probably had a load of double chins for that whole first 10 minutes. Oh well, Oliver Cromwell dies in September 1658 and three years later in 1661 his body was exhumed and posthumously beheaded by Charles II who put his head on a spike outside Westminster Abbey. The sandwich was created in 1762 in England by John Montague, who was in the middle of a very long card game and as an infamously problematic gambler. He requested something to eat with his hands so he could keep playing. So he was bought some meat between bread. The Celts didn't leave any written evidence of important historical events because they favoured oral history, instead with druids and scholars just learning tales by heart. For hundreds of years, Elizabeth I's dressing routine is the longest of any monarch ever. By the end of her life, it would apparently take her serving women four hours to get her dress. She originally wore wigs that matched her hair colour, but eventually needed makeup to cover the hair loss and the scars from smallpox. As she got older, thicker makeup was piled on to give her the mask of youth. But as I'm sure you know, the cosmetics that were used caused more damage to her skin than anything that ageing naturally would have ever done. Because putting a mixture of white lead and vinegar on your hands, face and neck every day surprisingly causes pretty bad corrosion. In ancient Rome, carts were banned during the day because the town was so busy and instead they were only allowed there at night. Charles II lived his reign as a Protestant but on his deathbed converted to Catholicism because he thought the people wouldn't accept a Catholic king. Headaches are recorded as early as ancient Egypt and then Hippocrates described the flashing lights you get before a migraine. He describes the visual um, disturbances. And Stone Age people, or as far back as 7000 BCE, um, there's evidence of headache neuroscience or Neolithic neurosurgery because there's skulls with evidence of trepanation or removing a segment of your skull to release evil spirits or demons. Mithridates seems like an unlucky name. Mithridates V was assassinated at a banquet in the year 120-ish where he was poisoned. The sixth tried to poison himself but failed because he took the antidote all his life. Henry VIII was apparently a hoarder. He was six foot two and weighed 120 pounds by the end of his life. He was also a hypochondriac who self-medicated and wrote his own prescription book. Cleopatra learnt up to 12 languages, a strong and intelligent leader, not just a seductress. There's a temple in Turkey that dates to 11,000 years ago, which predates Stonehenge by like 6,000 years, and historians aren't sure what it signifies, but it shows that organised religion was about an awfully long time ago. The women who worked in watch factories during the 1920s developed horrific diseases. The radium girls worked at the Radium Corp in America who used radium to make their watches glow in the dark. The women would lick their paintbrush to give it a sharper point when painting on the radium, which led to a whole range of horrific things, like some of their legs broke, their spines broke down, and one lady went to the dentist to have a tooth removed and her jaw fell out instead. Purple was a status symbol in ancient Rome, and it was treason for anyone other than the emperor to dress fully in purple. But a senator was allowed to wear purple a little bit. Emperor Claudius's third wife was apparently a nymphomaniac who challenged a prostitute to who could have the most sexual partners in one night, and she won. Gaius Valatius Catullus wrote a poem that addressed two of his critics that was so vulgar it wasn't translated from Latin until the 20th century. Google it. The Omaha Indian chief Blackbird apparently loved his horse so much he was buried sitting upon it. An Anglo-Saxon manuscript gave us evidence of a 9th century onion and garlic eye remedy that scientists more recently proved actually did kill 90% of the specific bacteria of the infection it was supposed to have been curing. Before we had alarm clocks, we had knocker-uppers who were people hired to shoot peas through a blowgun at your window in the morning to wake you up. Caligula often appeared in women's clothes in public. Caracalla slaughtered 20,000 Egyptians because they wrote a play that mocked him. 
Claudius avoided the assassination of the rest of his immediate family because he had a disability so no one saw him as a threat and while he was emperor he recorded a lot of history for us. According to DNA samples taken from his body King Tutankhamun's parents were also siblings which isn't shocking for ancient Egypt. The term hooker comes from the Civil War General Joseph Hooker who used to bring prostitutes along on campaigns to help his men's morale. Heroin was once an acceptable medicine that doctors prescribed for everything from headaches to coughs to rheumatisms. During the Great Depression, people began making their clothes out of flower sacks, so the flower sack companies, or the flower companies, started producing more colourful sacks so that people could stay slightly in fashion during such a difficult time. The Anglo-Zanzibar War was on the 27th of August 1896 and is the shortest war in history, lasting 38 minutes. King Henry VIII had servants called grooms of the stool who were there to wipe his bottom after he went to the toilet and it's said that during his reign he had all four of those men knighted. In 1740 the Roman Catholics in Bavaria founded a secret society called the Order of Pugs where members had to wear dog collars and scratch at the door to get in which was apparently active until 1902. Romans used stale urine as mouthwash because the ammonia does um, act as a cleaning agent but urine was in such high demand then that traders had to pay a tax on it. 14 years before the Titanic sank, Morgana Robertson wrote a novella called Futility which was about a large unsinkable ship called Titan that hit an iceberg in the North Atlantic and sank and strangely enough it didn't have any lifeboats. In the 16th century the wealthy elite used to eat dead bodies um, with Egyptian mummies being their favourite because it was believed the cadaver could cure illness. Hans Schwarf was the Luftwaffe's master interrogator whose technique was just to be as nice as possible. To get information from prisoners, he would take them outside for a walk with no guards, he would bake them homemade goods, or even have a tea party with them. And he was so successful that his style was incorporated into the military training programme of the US. One of the best-selling novels in the 15th century was an erotic novel called The Tale of Two Lovers, and it was actually written by Pope Pius II before he assumed his religious position. In the 19th century, dentures were made from the teeth of dead soldiers, and it's said that after the Battle of Waterloo, dentists ran onto the battlefield and raided the thousands of dead bodies for their teeth. The Sahara Desert was home to speeding crocodiles millions of years ago and fossil hunters in 2009 found that these remains show the crocodiles had land type legs that meant they could almost gallop and reach ridiculously high speeds. In ancient Asia and some parts up until the 19th century death by elephant was a fo popular form of, of execution. You might be executed by having a blade tied onto the elephant's tusks or they could twist and break your limbs or they could simply crush your skull. In 1644, Oliver Cromwell banned eating pie because it was a form of pagan pleasure, and the ban wasn't lifted until the Restoration came about in 1660. When Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI were beheaded, people apparently dipped their handkerchiefs into their food to keep as a souvenir, which was confirmed by scientists in 2011, who tested some blood-stained handkerchiefs and found Louis XVI's blood on them from 1793. Emperor Caligula gave his favourite horse, Incatatus, the role of senator, a house, among many other things, and planned to make him a consul before he was assassinated. But I don't believe all of that. I think I say that again later. <laughs> Cleopatra's reign was closer to the moon landings than it was to the Great Pyramids being built. Now, apparently, in ancient Greece, skirts were manly and wearing trousers could get you mocked for being effeminate. The Vikings discovered America half a millennium before Christopher Columbus and they settled in Newfoundland in the year 1000. I feel like I've said that one. The Colosseum used to be cladded with marble, but after the fall of Rome, the Goths invaded and looted the place, taking the marble and leaving the bare stone. Only six people died in the Great Fire of London in 1666, but it did destroy 13,500 homes. The wealthiest man to have ever lived in history was said to be Augustus, with a net worth now of 46 trillion. But since making that first video in 2022 when I said that fact, I've since seen that it's now said that Mansa Musa of Mali um, is the wealthiest, whose wealth was so vast it's impossible to calculate. 
In the 18th century with Europe's elite, fox tossing was a popular game where, as you guessed it, you could see how far and how high you could throw a fox. Apparently pink is the oldest colour with ancient pink pigment being found in rocks that were 1.1 billion years old, so prehistoric actually. Homer's Odyssey from 800 BCE also recognises the colour in association with dawn and it's repeated many times with lines like rosy fingered dawn. In the 17th century, a botanist started using pink when describing the edges of carnations, and in the 18th century, it became a symbol of luxury and class. In art, it was used to portray Jesus because it used to be associated with innocence and the womb. And of course, the Roman goddess of love, Venus, is often painted surrounded by pink because it's associated with her, and love because it's a mixture of passionate red and pure white. Captain Morgan was actually a real person, Sir Henry Morgan was knighted by Charles II. He was a Welsh privateer who fought for England against the Spanish in the Caribbean. The Voynich manuscript has been dated to the 1400s, but codebreakers are still unable to work out its meaning or its origins. The Eastern Roman Empire had a weapon called Greek fire, which was essentially a flamethrower built into their ships. It was mostly used in naval warfare, so it was very deadly because throwing water at it would only add to the fire, and it could be projected quite far into the distance. The Romans used to spread something called night soil over their gardens, which was a fertiliser made using their own faeces, which did help the plants grow, but also massively spread diseases. Women would use a herb called silphium that worked as a natural contraceptive, and it was actually used so much so that in the Roman times it went extinct. In 2018, archaeologists in Pompeii discovered the skeleton of a very unlucky man. He managed to survive the first wave of Pompeii's destruction in 79 AD, but shortly after, a boulder fell on his head and killed him. In the Middle Ages, a pig attacked a child, and the child later died of its wounds, so the pig was arrested and put in prison and on trial, and then found guilty for murder, where it was then executed by hanging in 1386. In the 18th century in England, pineapples were really rare, so they were a very high status symbol, and those who could afford them would carry them around quite often just to show off how rich they were. It's said that Charles II was presented with one by his rural gardener, who was the first to grow one in England. Napoleon once requested a rabbit hunt be arranged for him and his men, but when they were released from their cages, they charged at the men, so technically... Technically, Napoleon was attacked by a horde of bunnies. <laughs> Between 1900 and 1920, tug-of-war was hosted as an Olympic sport, and there were five different summer games between those years in which Britain won the most medals, winning five, beating the USA's three. In order to detox their skin through sweating and to feel closer to the gods, ancient Greek athletes would compete naked in the games. From 1912 to 1948, medals were given out for arts-based competitions during the Olympics. Medals were given out for literature, painting, music or sculpture, but they all had to be Olympic-themed, of course. There are many different stories explaining why um, we call beef or steak sirloin, but the best and most common involved Charles II. He was visiting family at Horton Estate, where he was served a large cutting of beef for dinner that he loved so much that he stood up and stated, a noble joint by St George, it shall have a name. He then drew his sword and knighted it at the table, saying, loin we dub you knight, henceforth be sirloin. Other versions involve Henry VIII or James I, all of which are quite amusing, but more boringly, it probably actually just derives from the French word instead. William Buckland, who was the first person to study geology at Oxford University in 1801, is more famous for his teaching methods. He would shout questions at his pupils' faces while thrusting a hyena skull at them, and apparently his ultimate goal in life was to taste every animal on earth. His favourite meal was apparently mice on toast, and he would host parties where he would serve puppies, porpoises or panthers, among other weird things. But the worst thing he did was in 1840, when visiting Lord Harcourt, who had come to own a silver locket that apparently contained the remains of the mummified heart of King Louis XIV of France, and they would put it on display when important people came round for tea. 
It was passed round the dinner table for everyone to admire. And when it got to Buckland, he grabbed the opportunity to be gross and said, I've eaten many strange things in my life, but I have never eaten the heart of a king. And you can guess what he did to the shock and horror of everyone at the table. And with that, we've reached the end. I don't think this is halfway. To be completely honest with you, it took me hours to write out all the uh, the um, videos I did in this playlist. Um, and I'm not sure this was half. So if you would like a part two that's probably going to be much longer, let me know in the comments. If you're watching, like the video and subscribe. If you're listening, do follow and give the podcast as many stars as you like. If you're listening, I don't know how you can let me know you want a part two. Let me know on Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed. Thank you for listening. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.